I fell in love, got married, and started a family, which is how I got to this point that I'm making baby food. <laughs> so welcome back to another episode. Today I'm going to start with organic sweet potatoes. The next video I'm going to show you how I do the acorn squash as well as the kale. But today I'm going to focus on the basics with the sweet potatoes. Basically when you start doing baby food for your child, it's best to start first with getting knowledge from your pediatrician as to certain guidelines. But I'm going to go over some things that I know as working in the food industry for so many years. So first thing first, we're going to wash and peel the sweet potato. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper so you can see like that really bright orange color. Because that top part is going to be a little bit bitter. Yeah, you don't want that lighter underskin. You want it to go all the way down. So why organic well with organic you don't have to deal with synthetic pesticides fertilizers the use of gmos and antibiotics in the food and let's face it you don't want that for your child now after you peel it wash it again wash the cutting board and wash your knife start clean fresh again just in case anything might cross contaminate with the new um just peeled potato okay so you want to wash it just again yeah it was a little bit tough there i don't know why my knife needs a, a little bit of uh sharpening again i just cut these into three strips and i'm going to dice it down and i'm trying to keep a nice uniform cube for these potatoes Just set it aside. Now the next thing we use is going to be bottled water. I'm not going to use tap water because the part of Houston I live in, we have a high level of calcium in our water and I never really trust that to cook my son's food in. So I used either that baby water, you know, you got that baby water, every supermarket has it, or uh, you can get a good uh, filtered water, something that's a higher pH level. Just do your research on it. You don't want nothing too acidic. Again, it's for a baby. Yeah, don't forget anything. So this is done now. I cooked it until the fork was able to get through it nice and easy. I drained it, but I did hold on to about a cup of the liquid that I boiled the food in. And I'm going to show you why later. So this is my Ninja cup. I'm going to use a Ninja processor to cut up my son's food. It's a Ninja Nutri Ninja Pro. And this is the 24 ounce cup. And that's some of the leftover liquid from what I boiled the oil in. This way, as you're blending the food, if you see it's a little too thick for your little one, you can add some of the liquid to kind of break it down a little bit and loosen it. So I'm just going to start with a little bit here right off the bat. Make sure it's nice and secure. Yeah, I'm sorry. I could not get my blender into the shot well but this is what i use the nutra ninja pro i make uh, smoothies in this the, i ha actually had this before i even had my son so it was a great way of just transitioning over just another use and if you check out my instagram page chef fiona fifi you will see that when i was doing this for my son I was going crazy. I was making like sweet potato, carrots, peas, um, kale. He loved kale. Don't ask me. I don't know. My son is strange. But I was doing it. This video that I'm doing today was actually a request for a friend of mine. So I figure I'll sit back and do this again, even though I don't have a use to make baby food anymore. But I figure I'd do this for my friend. And it's going to be just a little bit thick. And that was perfect. But it's hot. It's very hot. Okay, so we're going to use the ice bath. 
to take this temperature down. We're going to put the this uh, baby food in little portion containers, but first we got to bring down the temperature. This is very, very important. The reason why we want to do this is to prevent any bacteria from rapidly growing in the food because we're going to portion it out and put a little lid on it and put it in the fridge or the freezer. So just to prevent any kind of bacteria, you want to try, try to create as safe as possible of a food for your little one. And if you're worried if your blender or whatever you use, your, whether it's something that you use to blend drinks or a food processor, if you worry that it's still big chunks, you can always put this through a fine sieve first before you decide to pre-portion it. So these are my OXO tots. They're two ounce baby blocks. I got these from Babies R Us before they closed out, but they are sold at Target, Bed Bath & Beyond. Of course, you can find anything on Amazon, but they come in two ounce sizes as well as four ounce sizes. The four ounce only has four little cups with it. And these are the two ounces and it's a cute little tray, you know, and they're stackable. They don't connect, but they're stackable. And I'm going to use my tablespoon just to not create a mess. So I'm going to start by taking off these lids. Now these lids are really awesome. These containers, the way they're designed, they're airtight and leak proof. You can put them in the dishwasher, a freezer, the microwave, um, as well as the BPA, PVC, and Pathlate free. So they're pretty good for heating back up your food in as well. So you can, you know, you can make an extra large batch. That's what I used to do. I would make large batches of things and then date them and put them in the freezer. So that way I can keep them in rotation. And it doesn't take long for it to, you know, to defrost. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just taking my spatula and just making sure I'm stirring this up making sure I'm getting it cooled down as fast as possible. You can use a thermometer to check to see if it's at a cool temperature. Or you could just use the back of your um, knuckle on your on your um, pinky just use the knuckle of your pinky to see if it's a cool temperature but I mean honestly the amount that I'm doing is gonna cool down pretty quickly about 10 minutes I gave it and it was super super cold it was like it just came out the fridge okay we're gonna get rid of that ice bath now my doctor, the way, well, I should say my son's doctor, the pediatrician, the way she had us do it was we started out with different types of foods. And this is to kind of weed out allergens to see if my son is allergic to anything. So I started out with sweet potatoes and I moved to carrots and kale. And we did this in like every three day intervals. And at first she had me do two ounces once a day and then moved it up to two ounces twice a day. So it really depends, but definitely I'm not a doctor. I'm not a pediatrician. Talk to your pediatrician about the guidelines of how you want to help your child with food. And that's not just with homemade food. That's also with um, even if you decide to buy food, which honestly, this is just so easy to do yourself. And you're, you know that you're creating something that's safe for your child. Not only that, but it's so much cheaper and at this point let's talk these numbers now a store-bought organic food for babies is anywhere from 99 cents to 19 per funnel this is something I saw and on one month supply at 99 cents each you're talking about $29 and 70 cents and if you buy 129 each you're talking about $38 and 70 cents that's a lot of money now for homemade that one potato was 79 cents for one sweet organic potato I got that from like a farmer's market type shop now that one potato made 12 ounces you're gonna see six two ounce containers that I got from that one potato. That's 26 cents per four ounces. How much money I will spend per month? $7.80. Now, obviously, I'm not going to give my son sweet potatoes for the entire month. But I mean, think about it. You can do this with potatoes, acorn squash, um, your peas, your carrots. I mean, there's so many options. So just think about it. Anyway, if you'd like to check me out, I'm also on Chef Fiona Fifi on Instagram.com. And I hope I see you there. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. 
This is homemade baby food. And I was super excited about doing this. This was a requested video. I actually got this request a couple of times since uh, I posted on Instagram years back that I did my son's baby food. And I figured I'll get this done because now my pastor is requesting it. So yeah, I gotta, gotta do it, huh? But <laughs> anyway, um, this is very simple, very easy a project to do. And honestly, it is truly affordable and it's nice to know exactly what is in your child's food. It's really comforting. So again, keep it simple, keep it fresh, and make sure you always rotate that food out. Make sure you know what date you made your ingredients and make sure you use it within a certain proper amount of days. I would suggest only keeping, if it's fresh, keep it in the fridge for three days. If you have it in the freezer, maybe up to two weeks. But again, I'm not a doctor. I am not a pediatrician. You also have to ask your child's pediatrician about guidelines and certain types of food that they should try out and when they should try it out. And the little trick with if you're not sure if your blender is going to be able to handle pureeing this food down so it's completely smooth, you can run it through a sieve to kind of get out any type of chunks so that way you can avoid any type of choking hazards because don't forget the child that you're going to be giving this to is going to be pretty young and may not know or understand that they need to cough to get these pieces out if anything happens but enjoy this video don't forget to like don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and next week we're going to attack that acorn squash as well as the kale so I see you then. Peace. I remember when I first started doing this and I went to a shop. Actually, it's the same shop that I got the sweet potato from. I'm not going to name their name. The lady looked at me. She's like, oh, this is your first child? I was like, yeah. She's like, you won't do it for the second. I'm like, what the? Why wouldn't I? This is so much more affordable to do it. So, yeah.